Hey everybody, I have a video here for you today. We're going to look at a little lost history. We are flying into the heart of the country, St. Louis, Missouri. And we have Cahokia across the river. But I want to talk about St. Louis today. And we are going to go near the Stan Musial Memorial Bridge here. Who is Stan Musial? He was one of the greatest consistent hitters in baseball history. He had 3,630 hits, 1,815 at home, 1,815 on the road. That's who Stan Musial was. But we're going to go down here, just under the bridge. We're going to take a look at a little monument here. Now, right here, under the bridge, there is a little monument of stone and this had an inscription in it and I guess that plaque has been taken off because fear it was going to be stolen or something but this is a little monument that marks kind of a sad chapter but a, certainly a different different chapter of American history and this marks what was here at one time but what did Mound Street and Broadway look like about 175 years ago? Well, here is a map. Here is the area that we are looking at where that little monument lies. Mapping was done. A huge mound that looked a lot like the ones at Cahokia and a Poverty Point. That's the way that shape looks like. But there was a great mound. Within the city limits of St. Louis a long time ago, and it was totally raised, totally taken out. Here is a pic of what that shore at St. Louis looked like in an artist rendition with the Great Mound right here. Here are workers when they were dismantling the mound, putting in newer construction, city, homes, some industry in this area. And here you get a good idea of the former shape of this. It was a sloping mound, very good sized, and it would have taken probably a lot of work to totally get rid of this. And there were smaller mounds that were also taken out in this area, and it's why St. Louis is called Mound City. Now this was written in the St. Louis newspaper in 1869. It says, men are digging on every side, and what should have been purchased by the city and preserved inviolate will soon be known only in local tradition. So wrote the Daily Missouri Democrat, a local newspaper, on November 8, 1868, on the fate of Big Mound, the largest of a cluster of earthen formations left by long-departed Native American culture. The mounds were north of the city's main business district, on a rise overlooking the Mississippi River. It says, Big Mound, at today's North Broadway Mound Street, was 319 feet long, 158 feet wide, and 34 feet high, its flat top pr provided a panorama of river and city. It was a landmark for steamboat pilots and inspired one of St. Louis' first nicknames, Mound City, a term that once grazed dozens of names of businesses and associations. What the formation didn't get was respect. Some people built homes on them. In 1833, the city hollowed out Little Mound, at 3rd and O'Fallon Streets for a water reservoir. A steam engine pumped water from the river. In 1844, the Field and Vandeventer Lumber Company built a two-story reception building atop Big Mound with an extensive, beautiful view. Called Mound Pavilion, it flopped as an attraction and burned in 1848. Karma. The best survey of the mounds came in 1819 when Army engineers en route to the upper Missouri River measured them while waiting for their steamboats to be repaired. They counted 25 mounds from Biddle Street North to Mound and east of Broadway, north of today's Lackalada Landing, one of the most distinctive at Ashley and Biddle Streets, known as Falling Garden because of the three wide step terraces facing the river. But I've said it once, I'll say it again. The ancient United States was a very fascinating place. We had big pyramids. 
built by spiritual people. We had massive cities. When the government of the United States tell you that there was little bands of roaming savages cruising across the United States, no, these were sophisticated cities. They were no different than places in Mexico and Central America. Pyramids, astronomy, great knowledge built into these places. And people back then, 150, 175 years ago, said these weren't worth keeping around. And they totally removed them, a lot of them, most of them. Cahokia still remains today, thank goodness. But this pyramid here, I think, was very similar to the large, massive pyramid we have at Cahokia in Illinois. And here is a website, and I don't know if any of you people watch Drunk History on the History Channel. I find that show to be fairly amusing. But here is a website called Distilled History, and they go over the big mounds of St. Louis. And here's that little marker that I showed you at the beginning beneath the bridge. Here is a pic of a side of that big mound here. Flat top, terraces. Here is a map of where it lie in the early city of St. Louis on an early map. Here are workers at just the very little that remained when they were taking it out in 1869. Here is that marker and the plaque was on it marking the original site of Big Mound, but that plaque has been taken out for fear of it being stolen, I guess is what one website said, and there is a coin in, uh, embedded into that stone. But this is Distilled History. I'll leave the link below. This gives some information on Big Mound. But I just thought I'd give you a little bit of the lost history of Big Mound in St. Louis. I think lost history videos are some of the most important videos I do. I know a lot of people from the middle United States have no idea a place like Cahokia, which is still around, actually exists. And I'm sure there's even fewer people that know there is a massive pyramid across the river in St. Louis. Seems there was a lack of regard for ancient monuments. And some of our uh, amnesia, as Graham Hancock calls it, is self-inflicted at times. And it all seems to be about progress and money and the false narrative that had to be put forward by the leaders of the country in the early years that the United States was a barren land without any sophisticated civilizations that was very important to the founding of the United States and then they just went with that no matter what they found and just a total disregard for the amazing past in this country and I've talked about lost ancient ruins before and this just reminds me of a brilliant line in Graham Hancock's Magicians of the Gods where he's at Karahan Tepe and there's T-shaped pillars poking out of the ground just like a Gobekli Tepe and nobody gives a damn. But he says, I'm reminded that our collective stupor is also often willfully self-inflicted as though we no longer care to know where we come from or who we really are. But it seems like this site in modern St. Louis was the Twin City of Cahokia across the river. We have Twin Cities today, such as Minneapolis, St. Paul, and Dallas, Fort Worth. Well, it seems like this big mound marked a great city at St. Louis, the Twin City of Cahokia. Across the river, we still have those remains. But I just wanted to give you a look at this. This is a fascinating period of lost history. Hope you thought this was interesting, and you all have a very nice day.